fish. Oh, a whole school of oh, giant fish. Oh, school of reds. Oh, wow. They like that spot. That's a oh, good... Oh, no, no, don't move. You're ruining the photogrammetry. <laughs> <laughs> Dang biology. So also, also, you can see you, that you remember this reef rock that was so filled with erosional holes and things like that. And it looks like what we're seeing is the top here, which was looked to me much more like a, a beach sand or something that got cemented. So you're seeing the, the very top of it there that the coral is sitting on. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is where Dan's our true artistry is going for photogrammetry now. He's trying to get as low as he can once the butt of the of Hercules is kind of off the right ledge. A little for me, please. Now what what type of fish are those? So he can peek under the look ledge. Like, look like some kind of we're gonna fill that in on the photogrammetry. Squirrel fish or something. I'm I'll get back to you. Is this They're not the really cool. that the that uh, Fortunately, the squirrel fish here are going to completely ruin the photogrammetry. <laughs> That's okay, though. They are scattering like squirrels do. Yeah, I'm not Where? certain on it. Might be some, like, relative of... That is amazing, oh, Here we go. Good job, buddy. I think we got... No, not that one. Do -do -do -do. Oh, no. Yeah, that will make a spectacular three-dimensional... Model. Oh my God. And Larry, those little black make up a little uh, time here. pieces of basalt that are dropped randomly really, on the surface. Right in, so you get a little extra bonus time. Right what would have caused those to be? Uh, I've noticed those before. They appear to be fairly fresh. I was afraid you're going to ask that job. <laughs> <laughs> what recent eruption, perhaps, blown them out there? I guess I guess it's possible. We're certainly uh, well. I don't see we're not really the side of the island that that uh, had very recent eruptions. Right. Because as you pointed out, these islands, each one, if you as you move west, the islands, each island is two million years older well, than one, the one just to the east of it. One to two. What's that in the far in the far range? It's yeah. Red and white. Oh, that's pink, interesting. Pink and white, red and white, yeah. Um, somebody's asking, would it be possible to fill in where they are messing up the photogrammetry? I guess asking <laughs> about how the fish... I don't think that they'll mess up the photogrammetry, not, not seriously, um, although they might. So the photogrammetry only allows, or the current settings that I'm running allow about 40,000 points to identify on each image that are have changed relative to the image previously. So when a fish moves in the frame, it locks a whole bunch of points on that fish, which might be false points. So you lose the capacity to have really good, accurate photogrammetry. On but the fish, it, but everything else is okay. Is that what you mean? Uh, there's just like less, imagine that normally you have 10 pennies to complete a transaction, but, you're, but someone else comes in and that's a bad analogy. Anyway, there's only so many points. <laughs> Wait, do I still have 10 pennies? Or? No, you have no pennies. You're spending all of the pennies to complete the task. But then someone comes in, a fish, and says, hey, la, 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 la. And that fish takes three pennies because they're a distraction to the rest of the image. Uh, okay, still a terrible analogy, though. <laughs> John, an answer to the uh, pieces of basalt. Yes. Oh, exactly. give me a minute. I'm behind Adelanta. All right. and, and that's that they were originally incorporated into I the carbonate rock and have been eroded out. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Kind of like uh, raisins in a plum pudding <laughs> yeah. rising out. Mm -hmm. Thank What's you, that? Larry. That's a good explanation. And that coral, yeah. is the white part dead? And the uh, is di yeah. that part is dyed, perhaps? Not that we don't want to uh, go back, of course. We need to keep moving, but... Would that be the explanation, perhaps, uh, Megan, if she's still in line? Uh -huh. I don't think they're dead. I think it's kind of just like new area of growth where it still um, hasn't developed its color. Because you'll see in a lot of the red ones down here, they, they have that white tip. Okay. Um, but yeah, Megan can probably verify that. That's um, characteristic of that species. Yeah. I, I really hope that Madison is listening right now because somebody wrote in, 
a squirrel fish and a moose fish. Am I dating myself if I wonder if they're rocking a bullwinkle? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Slow clap. <laughs> there are a lot of holes in little caves for fish and little guys to hide in all along here. It's a great habitat for a wide variety of fish and invertebrates. Uh, a viewer is saying that, that they think that that pink and white coral is a still steroid? Still to start? Still, still a steroid? Yes. Yeah, could be. Definitely not marking that. That one kind of has like a a real thick base, but yeah, I, th I think it's definitely in right, the close the area again. if it's not correct. I don't have a better answer yet for him, so. Ridge, ridge nav, two five meters, one three five. Ooh, look at that. Uh -huh. I think I found the redfish too. It's a Beric Splendens. Does it have school. a common name? We'll look that up. Hey, Zach. Yeah. I like this one, huh? Yeah, I'm putting Atalanta right here. Coming in? Oh. That's oh, that today? Big coral. Yeah, yeah. That's the big, that's the big coral, huh? That is it. It's that's beautiful. Right. Is it? Can we put that up? Uh, let me, give me two seconds to... Oh, he's still just in the... This is still in the sparse point Look class. Them. Okay. Look at this. Oh! <gasps> they like him <laughs> like oh. in the desert. Jeez, we could map that rock so well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Little coral house. That is Zach, this is your moment right that there. That's fabulous. Yeah, this is worth a fly around. Uh, someone's saying that the redfish is highly prized among local fishers and keep we should keep this spot a secret. <laughs> uh, this is almost 450 meters depth, so I <laughs> welcome the hand liners to come out. Uh, they've got automatic reels now. Oh, yeah. yeah they'll be reeling for it's a, a whole while. new world of fishing these days. Yeah, it's an Al Alfonsino is the common name for you there. What is it? Alfonsino. Alfonsino. The, the splendid Alfonsino, to be exact. Yeah. Is That's it the red resplendent? Fish? Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Look at this incredible diversity right here at this coral site. Jeez. And we've got our little spiky... That urchin will map well, too. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> He's not moving too fast for you. Yeah. No, I know, no. Well, he is moving his spines. I don't like that. Hold still, buddy, please. Now, are those sea urchins uh, eating the coral? Is that why we see them in, in those positions? It looks like they're, they're preying on the coral. If anyone knows. I know the brittle stars and starfish will will eat. But Chris, coral. I'm looking too to see if you picked up that little nub. Yeah, like you I, did. You he, did. I it, did. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's too close. Yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. So. But yeah, you can definitely see it, right there. Yep. Of course, photogrammetry is the better tool for such fine details. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, would have never found it if it weren't for the sonar. <laughs> <laughs> Battle Royale. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're going to combine our forces for the ultimate data product. It is yeah. true. When sonar and photons combine. <laughs> it's like, you know, like in the Power Rangers, when they can't fight the, the bad guy oh, separately, yeah. Yeah. they have to form together into the Megazord. And in this case, the bad guy is no data. That's correct. <laughs> for anyone listening, this is the stage where control van discussion clearly indicates we are coming to the end, end of our, our dive. Yeah, what time do we need to be off? We need to be up at 4, so we have probably another 15-20 uh, minutes. Okay. And I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to run run out of interesting stuff here as we head away from here. The high, high point. Yeah. I, know the, I know the cliff goes along, but I'm just wondering. I agree. Looks like the corals have disappeared. 3H bridge now. Oh. 30115. Well, I won't say no because we have recorded far too much today. <laughs> yeah, so it's, we, we have about 20, meter, uh, 20 minutes to come up uh, from 400 meters. Yeah, 20 meters a minute. 20 minutes would be 400. Yeah, I mean, meters. we can continue to follow this cliff, Larry. Yeah. I don't know if you if there's something like over here that you want to see or. 
Oh, let's see. It looks a little slopier. Yeah, no, this is probably the sharpest cliff. It's yeah. just it's gotten deeper and further away. I think it's that it's the wall across the way that probably captures the current. That right, wall there. Right. And there's this like there's yeah, this like crack here. Yeah, let's let's do that. Yeah, you want to do the crack? Yeah, yeah, well let's you know come up right. along the rough bridge, part. Bridge, bridge, now hold position. And and then we'll uh, we'll be closer to where we started to so come yeah, up. So head over to like see this. There's this crack that runs all the way up. We're gonna go check okay. that out. We, we, we can't. No. no. Thank you, Bridge. So, well, Jonathan, we'll come up along here. Yeah, you can see the crack yeah, follows the one all the way around I like, like that. that. That looks cool. Uh, so somebody answered uh, your question, John. Uh, it, oh, you don't hear. Uh, someone answered your question. Let me give you a quick deep uh, They said that, that some urchins are coral safe. Others find them to be yummy snacks. Thank you, Nettison. You said someone has an answer to the question about the urchins? Yeah, they said that some uh, urchins are coral safe and others find them to be yummy snacks. Uh, thank you for whoever provided that. I've ended photogrammetry. Zach? What? I've ended the photogrammetry room. Yeah, we'll, we'll tell you when to start again. Yeah, just wake <laughs> me up. Take a nap. How strong is that current down there? It does appear to be... Uh, say what? How strong is the current down there? It does appear to be bending the line between Atalanta and Hercules. Well, that, that, that's absolutely right, Dan. I, I, you know, I mean, it, it's, really a game, it's really a game changer. Currents are often um, less compared to the surface at depth, right there. The currents are often less intense down at depth than they are up at the currents or up at the surface. Yes. Oh, oh there's, there's a close-up. A, a good view of that. Uh, yeah, oh, there because uh, the, the currents are for the most part wind-driven. Right. Kind of see and the so crack in Atalanta. You get them, but then you have density-driven currents it's that a are pretty deeper. small feature. And and when they run into a feature, then they'll get accelerated. The feature yeah. itself will look will at the accelerate. incredible resolution of of uh, oh. the Norbit. Yeah, Able that, to it, get this tiny detailed feature. What was the name of the fish? It is the that? Splendid Alfonsino. Ooh, Alfonso. Yeah, they they look like they play the exact same role as up on the on the shallow reef. Um, we have squirrel fish and soldier fish, um, often referred to as mempachi out here. Um, which are just red fish that hide in holes. Um, so yeah, it looks like they're, they're the deep version of those. They're not exactly the same genus, but... Is the Mipanchi, uh, Zach, the one you said that was such a, it's a prized fish in the area for fishermen? Uh-huh. Yeah, right yeah, that's what somebody yeah. wrote in. Yeah, these ones, I don't know so much about, uh, but on the reef, definitely the Mipanchis are, are very heavily this targeted. One, this one right here. Oh, yeah, I think that one's just a sport like, fishing. I think that uh, one's just like a uh, people eat like them. Yeah, people love eating them. Yeah, yeah but it's not just not a commercial fishery. Really. No, I don't. Not yeah, not technically. You, kind of, you see it kind yeah. of petered out in this area, so hopefully we can pick the, it up uh, again. The Hawaiian name form is the uu, and that's something that spearfish will do when they go there down. They'll make that grunting sound, and it'll come bring them out of the cave because they think you're talking to them. So oh. it's one of, oh, the, wow. one of the fish you hear when you're down diving a lot. You hear that. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. And this is the first uh, location since I've been on the ship in Hawaii that we've actually seen sport fishing and sport fishermen out in their boats uh, fishing. So this is apparently is a popular area. Yeah. Yeah. We are much closer to harbors now than we were before. So. Oh, this is Good. a nice crack here. <laughs> That's crack. I do like that crack. <gasps> Let's get this one up once it's done. 
You know, in many ways, yeah. this, this landscape does remind me of the um, American gonna, Southwest with the mesas uh, and, the, and, it and the crevasses it like this with the canyons. Because it's uh, pretty incredible. If I was smart, I think that you can scale it at this stage where you're in your 2DS view. Yeah, those pink corals also have white tips on each one, so you're exactly right. One of y'all said that it was a characteristic of that species, and it certainly looks that way. Somebody mentioned that in the chat, too, that, that this wasn't a question of living and dead. It was actually a na the nature of the, of the coral itself. Yeah, I believe that's that, that you can see it here on each one. It's exactly right, Larry. Who's going to tell us how deep that crack is? Uh, 1391 meters. Huh. Dan placed the vehicle right on it, so that made it easy. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm how, not how deep the water depth is. What's the oh, height? How the deep height, it. The height oh. from the top to the bottom of the. Oh, we that's stopped. A, that's a harder question. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> I thought the cameras froze. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, it's freaking me out here. I got to say, the chat loves that you're calling Ridge, it the crack. Nav, it is a good crack. Uh, two zero Look at it. Three, three, I'm to take a picture of the crack. Five. <laughs> and, the, and for the benefit of the folks list, are listening in and watching, the two green laser dots that you just put up, how far apart are those? They're used, I know the, the team here, you use those to measure. How far apart are those two green dots, the laser? They're 10 centimeters. 10 is centimeters. It? I would love to continue to fly down this crack. I'm recording in the monoscopic view. It, it is a great view. If visual. possible, Dan. Dan. Uh, just let 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 let, let oh. them let them. Yeah, stay parked for just a second. I can. Oh, here we go. So I can. So the bottom of the crack is uh, three point five meters, and the top is. Uh, it normally looks good, but it just doesn't right now. In in width, in Chris, that's three point five meters in width. No. Uh, so it's a difference. So, so we're talking about two and a half meters or so for from the top to the bottom. Yeah, two and a half meters, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you can okay. see, if you look at the Norbit screen, I have the... Oh, I see, there you go. Yeah, yeah so you can the see Norbit right screen. in the middle. Right. The sonar does not lie. <laughs> uh, Dan, just as low as possible, kind of keeping the cameras centered in with the uh, canyon will yeah, two and a half be meters. a pretty compelling image for us. Dan's not on SPL. No, you guys scared him off again. So Chris, we ought to name this uh, canyon after Dan, you. It's kind of your uh, canyon. Just as low as K possible K on canyon. this canyon, and I'm recording it in the fish eye view right now. And this canyon really does have a lot of interesting features for a 3D model. Yeah, it looks like it peters out here and then uh, picks up again, right about uh, right to there. Off to the left. Yeah. Yeah, you might have to make a sharp left. There you go. Yeah, you can kind of follow this feature yeah, around, yeah, and right. then it'll... It'll lead to another crack. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. Bridge, bridge nav, two, zero, one. 
2030. Larry, these do appear to be absolute, you know, cracks in this Affirmative. original you, mm -hmm. uh, coral rock, probably caused by movement of the ground due to volcanic activity and my movement of magma underneath expanding and raising and lowering the ground, perhaps? All, all of the above, I'm sure. Some, some is probably just an expansion of original small cracks, some tectonically created. It's not an easy place around here, although, again, th this side of the island has been relatively relatively stable, as, as Megan pointed out. But this island, the Hawaiian island, big, the Hawaiian, uh, Hawaii Big Island is one of the most tectonic, one of the most volcanically active places in the entire United States, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know, come to the right it's a there. Nice yeah. crack. Yeah. There and it that's is. That's the one. We'll follow that one up, and then it'll peter out. And might be time for us to come up. We'll Just see. as uh, as low as you can go. I'm looking for a little Star Wars effect with this coral here. No, 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 no. And again, a beautiful view from Atalanta. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Larry. That's a great shot from above. There you go. There you go. Fly that canyon. If people at home are able to do so, you can watch on the quad at camera. Yards. Is that a little octopus there? Yeah. Next to the next to the coral. On the left side. The left side. Oh my gosh. Do you, I can use the stick of pointing. The stick of pointing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The high tech device. It's a tradition. It's been here for a a long time. Oh no, my Star Wars file. Hi. Oh, oh come. Dan has a history. Dan has a history with that sticks. <laughs> well, that fish on the bottom that just crossed is uh, green. It looked like a. That's such a beautiful view. It is spectacular. Oh, fishy, it? fishy. Oh. <laughs> oh yes. Oh. Oh. Poor fishy. Sorry, man. <laughs> Uh, we have a question in the Absolutely chat. Absolutely uh, beautiful. Asking, uh, is Hawaii or Alaska more volcanically active? Oops. Well, I think Hawaii is probably more volcanically active, although Alaska certainly has activity, but I suspect Hawaii is more volcanically active. Just an absolutely incredible view here. It's just, just gorgeous. It's a very different kind of activity. In, in Alaska, it's more related to subduction around the margins of Alaska. You tend to have much bigger, bigger events here. It's related to magma mm -hmm. coming up into, from the hotspot into the island. And so there's probably more ongoing, smaller activity here. Again, I don't know this, I'm, gonna, I'm just speculating. Alaska, larger events that are probably more into, less frequent. Okay, I've ended photogrammetry. Can we go back and look at the octopus? That's uh, Larry. Well, I think that we're going to be yeah, coming to the of... end. We're, it's going to peter out the crack here. Yeah, so. that's it. Well, so it, I, I, it almost I, looks like it picks up over here, but I don't know oh, if we want to go that far. That's fish. Oh. Is that an octopus? Oh, there's an octopus. Where's the octopus? Where's the octopus? Uh, to the left, we just saw him in the cinema view. Stick of pointing would point to the top left hand side of a monitor, but I think he went into the crack. Or just turn sorry. Turned his camouflage on. Or her. Yeah. Yeah, but he's gone. To the left. Lateral left. Yeah. Oh well, there's yeah. a little nah, fish. he's gone. He's gone. He went into the hole. Unless you want to go out back after that octopus. We're getting a nod from... Uh, well, this is we're, we're now coming back the way we we came. Well, I think that we have to... Yeah. I think we're going to go look at the octopus. All right. No control anymore. 
Oh, right. no, but I stopped photographing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, that's actually pretty fair. Um, so the student that was applying for the internship is asking, uh, have we ever or will we ever uh, research the Gulf of Alaska or the Bering Sea? Is, are there any plans for the Nautilus to go uh, up that way? I think not, because uh, I think Bob uh, says uh, that he likes to stay within the Tropic of Cancer and the top trop Tropic of Capricorn, yeah, not, not go he's, beyond he's a warm, those. He's a warm-blooded explorer. And we have a question for John. Oh, that is an octopus, octopus for sure. There's the uh, octopus. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, oh. It's right there. It's right there. Sorry, okay. we'll get our, back to Jonathan's question in a second. Our final octopus zoom before we have to come up. Oh, oh no! Can we get it? He's poking in. Oh, he's so smart. Oh. Safety. Yeah. That was the same one Chris found before. Yeah. That was. Where did he go? That's what we get for doubting Chris. He's, he's he, picked it up in his multi-beam. Yeah, I was going to say, he mapped it in the multi-beam, yeah. for sure. Right. Oh, look at my <laughs> multi-beam. He even picks up octopus like. Uh So, Jonathan, uh, when you do photogrammetry and a fish swims through, is it like a cartoon where you have multiple layers and you can remove a cell or part of the cell and still have a good image? Yep. Totally. Uh, if there's lots of ghosts that appear uh, in photogrammetry, um, Zach, do you want to talk about the process of cleaning those up? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Oftentimes, um, especially in this scenario, since we're we're taking so many photos, um, we can we can actually just remove those photos. Um, but other times, uh, you just get enough overlap, kind of where you're where you're patching them together. Um, there's also things you can do after using different applications where you can kind of clean up those murky spots with what you know is behind it. Um, it all depends. We haven't ran into too many issues on, on this trip, really, um, with, with the fish getting in the way. Um, but yeah, when they do, we there there's little like workarounds within the program where you can basically like align over the top of them and, and, and use the ones uh, where the fish is not smearing across your screen. Is that another octopus? I thought the same, but I didn't yeah. want to say uh, it. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it's a coral. I don't think it was. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. We're all going after our last minute octopus here. Aww. So we're, we're at 3.30 now. If you figure it's 20 minutes up. Oh, there's an octopus. There's an octopus. Oh. There's this. Little dark. No, they're That's fish. fish. <laughs> I think that everybody, everything's going to look like an octopus now. Oh, yeah. I'm a fish, I'm a mother, I'm an octopus's brother. Then we'll pull the plug, okay? One coral, one urchin. I'm an urchin, I'm a fish. <laughs> I'll keep on going dish. A lasting image to stay with us. <laughs> oh. It's been an extraordinary it's true. Um, it was, dive. It was a spectacular dive. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And this is the Nautilus's second trip to this general area, but um, I don't know what the images are like that you captured before, but I think the film that you got today, particularly with the new high resolution, IMAX camera is going to be especially memorable. All right. Well, here we are. Okay. Ship's right there. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to see. Yeah. Hey. So, Dan, you're in a good position to call it and come on up. All righty. Another nice crack in there. Well, then we can go look at this last coral here. Just one more coral. 
You want to zoom into those guys? Cool little pokey fish there to the right. Our depth has stayed very consistent throughout this. We're about 389 meters deep right now. Is that some dead coral underneath yeah. it? Is that or broken off from it? Makes you wonder if something's getting chased through there or something. Yeah. It just ran right into it. Can't imagine it just falls yeah, off. Let's take a let's take a nice zoom. Look at look at the coral hanging on the cliff and the stuff down below too. All right. I think that's very similar to what we've seen. Yeah. Yeah, the multi, uh, the pink and white, uh, clearly a feature of that species. Uh, somebody's asking, how does the Nautilus stay so still on the surface if a she does not drop anchor? It does it by something called dynamic positioning. Um, it has a series of thrusters that allow it to uh, make very, very uh, gentle moves. And that combined with modern uh, satellite positioning, um, it, know, it knows its position. You would give it a position to stay in, and the thrusters will just keep maneuvering the vessel back and forth to hold that position. Sometimes it's more difficult than others, depending on the currents. But uh, it does a very good job of that. And, and Larry, could you describe the innovation that Bob came up with here for isolating Hercules from Atalanta to help stabilize Hercules so we get these superb images. Yeah, well, this is basically uh, if we were to tow Hercules directly from the ship's wire, all the motion that the ship has in terms of up and down would be transmitted directly to Hercules, and we'd get seasick watching the vehicle move up and down. So the idea is that you connect it to another body, in this case, Atalanta, wow. that absorbs the motion. Right. And right. it lets Hercules swim out on a neutrally buoyant tether and stay quite stable. Oh, exactly. It also provides a system where you can light um, from above and get that kind of eye in the sky picture of Hercules, which is often very spectacular. All right, with this closing shot then. Yeah, how's that crusting on the reef? Isn't that yeah. crazy? Copy. That is some real super glue there. It uh, coral oh, yeah. has glued itself to the rock. Oh, what is that? Ter the Telleran was talking oh, about the it actually forming a carbonate material, which then yeah. blends with the carbonate host, the substrate. Yeah, it's I amazing. See. I see. All right. It's not a moose fish, is it? I got a moose moose. <laughs> Here Alrighty. we go. Farewell, beautiful canyon. Okay, yes, we all say goodbye to this uh, really spectacular place and uh, thank Megan for leading us here. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, again, thank you to Megan Putz and the entire Hurl team for all the work that they've done in the past in this region and uh, everyone else supporting this project on this ship. And I thank Dan and Rye and, and Chris in the front row for some spectacular driving and navigation. Here, here. And we thank the Norbit, too, for <laughs> helping, us, helping us know where to go. What a fantastic tool. The Norbit for helping us see where to go. It Looking forward to seeing the images from the IMAX. It's going to be quite the uh, quite a lot of work ahead of us now for uh, data processing, huh? Just as we catch up, we fall behind. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that means that we've, done, data. we've done a very good job. I'm happy with that. That means we're having good dives. 100%. That's what that really means. And today's dive is a great illustration of the value of telepresence that you could have. And do we have to notify the deck crew, or they? Uh, you did good. Thank you, Dan. How long will it take to come up from the bottom? Oh, not more than 20 minutes. Oh, that's that's a quick turnaround. Of course, we're quite shallow as well.
There we go. And the the winch issues have all been resolved, it appears. Bridge, bridge now. The power supply, yes, yeah. I think so. They solved it with the replacing the power supply, Larry, and stayed up last night late working on it. Checked it out, and I believe it worked. Uh, it worked well throughout this whole dive. That's just a power supply working. So the winch is working. Yes. Air conditioning now working again in the van. So yes. electronics is happy. They never care about the people, but it's the electronics. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's keep the banter down. And let them talk as they bring it up. Zero point five knots, please, Bridge. Yeah. DVL lock all the way to the surface. <laughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. Huh? We might we might have to because somehow yeah. Well, we'll let this first move get up to speed and see how things start settling. What is going on here? Why is the ship is like the ship is not there? Yes. Uh, toggle visibility is that? Yeah. Wham. The ship. The ship is the ship actually? Yeah. Chris, you can do an extinction test. See. Oh, I do every descent. That was, that, that really was a, a wonderful dive, so. <laughs> yeah, so we finished early today because we have a, a long run to the next dive site tomorrow, which is going to be the Molokai, Molokai Canyons. Yes. And that should also be, I think, quite spectacular. Not, not probably as spectacular as this with respect to the coral, but from a, from a geologic perspective, very nice.
Ala. What's the question? Um, so we have some questions. Uh, what time will we be on tomorrow? Yeah, so tomorrow we're going to start the dive probably same time about at nine oh, Hawaiian nine. time. Yeah. yeah. So that's What's six that? hours. Uh, we could go ahead. faster. You can see the thrusters aren't doing anything. We're just behind the east coast. Yeah. For bridge, those bridge, that are can we increase speed to one knot? Um, did the pumpkins ever explode last night? No, they did not explode or implode. They were a little mushy. You still see, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, someone's writing and I'm looking at the stats and they say that Nautilus has been at about a three degree list for the past 10 or so hours. Is this correct or is the sensor giving false information? Yeah, that's a, that's a, I can't answer that question, but I'll ask. Uh, yeah, that's probably correct. Yeah, Nautilus does list. Yeah, they, it, they as they drain tanks mm -hmm. and things, it will list one way or the other. Mm -hmm. As it ship burns fuel and uses water and that sort of thing. It's pretty normal. Uh, somebody else is asking, what is the estimated transit time to the next dive? I, I think we, I think we have a 13 hour, 13 hour steam. And maintain bearing. Time. The pumpkins were, somebody's asking if they were cracked, uh, they were not. You have to stop not. the movement, just, main, just keep going, just keep going. Um, I did. I posted a video on Slomo's uh, TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, no, mate. Just keep going. You're fine. Of the pumpkins. Uh, yeah, so it's coming in line. I I yeah, no, I was like, I didn't want him to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know if the Nautilus Instagram posted about the pumpkins. Yeah, that wide angle camera view is uh, really neat. Uh, Slomo social media is uh, on Instagram at Slomo Love Science and on TikTok at Slomo the Sloth. And it's S L O M O. Yeah, that's definitely not right. Everything's lined up nicely now. All right.
Yeah. We're definitely getting closer to the surface. It's looking brighter. And for those of you wanting to join tomorrow, uh, we're going to be diving at 9 a.m. Hawaii time. Um, for Central, that's going to be 2 p.m. <laughs> yeah. To what? Oh. Oh, I see. What, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I don't have the vertical references quite lined up yet. Wait, we gotta wait. No, we gotta go from. No, we gotta go from the her, her, the Nautilus base link. I'll screenshot. Uh, there you go. Yeah, screenshot. You can cheat and from this one. But it's not going to come all the way up to the ship. I'm the this is above the geoid and this is at the water level. I should fix that, but we don't really use the ship for much of anything but a quick reference, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's the rotation point. See you, Larry.
You alright to stop Mezzo? Uh, control back deck. Go for control. I can uh, Herc drive ahead there a small bit? Roger. I'm okay, not gonna, thank you. I'll stop. I'm not going to stop the ship until you got... Yeah, I think... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, all stations, uh, Herc is uh, connected to the crane, starting to recover. Roger. Uh, control room, uh, let's all stop in the crane just to give her a chance to uh, position itself better. Roger. Okay, starting to heave in again. Roger. That's her past the transom. Her to the crane coming out. Power secured. But we saw an octopus, so... 